Well, welcome back to another special episode of Boozing with Jude. I know, I know, I said we do another vodka cocktail, but I had to stop. I have to do something different. This is a special episode I'm dedicating to my friends at Duke's Bar in London. Why, Jude? And who are they? Duke's Bar. You know that I love the martini. Possibly my favorite drink, a gin martini. When I moved to London, which I did in 2013, I was there for five years, not that I'm bragging, um, I lived ground zero. I lived right on Trafalgar Square for the first three years of my five years there and uh, started to go out and, and look for cocktails because, you know, I love cocktails. I couldn't find a martini, or if I did, it was a joke. A martini, a classic drink. Now, I know I like to talk about the history of drinks. I'm not going to do that today because really the history of the martini is a little bit cloudy. Um, could be from San Francisco, but originally it, I will say this, originally it's uh, one part gin and one part vermouth, white vermouth. Um, it's become less and less that much vermouth. So a lot of people like it, how we call it dry. So with very little vermouth in it. Um, I like it not so dry if the vermouth is really good, but what you get on the shelves here is not good vermouth. So basically, if you go into a bar here in my area where I go to get a martini, it's basically, it's basically gin. Okay. Couldn't find anybody in London that could make one or go in and like, we can't make that here. I'm like, well, wait a minute, the martini, this is James Bond world. Why can't you make one? Don't know. Or they think it was that martini and Rossi stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. So finally one day I did a little research and I found out, lo and behold, that the best place for martini was a stone's throw for me. I could actually walk there at a place called Duke's Bar in Duke's Hotel. And as it was off of St. James Square, I thought, I bet it's a really classy place. So one night I was at an event and I was relatively dressed up because I, I didn't know. And I walked over there. And I walked in and I thought, I was really nervous. I thought, man, you know, by myself, whenever you're a female by yourself, you walk into a bar, and if it's a classy bar, they're gonna be a little snooty or hoity-toity. I walked in and this lovely Italian gentleman said, you know, may I help you? I said, I, I, I just wanted to have a drink. Absolutely, couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been nicer. Brought me to this table. This place was cool. What was the first thing I noticed when I walked right in the entry? A signed picture by Sean Connery, the original James Bond himself. Apparently, this is the story, apparently um, Ian Fleming, the creator of the James Bond books, films, um, used to go there. And legend has it, whether this is true, I do not know, that this is where he came up with the idea for incorporating the martini, shaken not stirred, into his um, stories, the James Bond stories. It is the coolest place. Okay, one thing I'll tell you about cocktails. It's not just about the drink. It's not just about the drink. It's about the feel. It's about the presentation. It's about the creation, how it's crafted, how it looks, how things blend together, the glass it's in, the setting you're drinking it. It's not just about glugging down something. This is why I love cocktails. I love the whole surrounding atmosphere that goes with it. Let me tell you a real quick story. Excuse me while I go off into, you know, Judy like memory land. I went to a, a, a conference with some colleagues in Kansas City, right? 10,000 people international conference. And um, there was so like power and light district, I guess I don't remember, but they had a big party for all of these people at this conference. So beers and wines were free and all these bars were open. And I was with a, co a colleague who's a little bit elderly and she loves her white wine. And uh, I said, I'm going to go get a drink. Would you like me to get you something? She goes, I would like some white wine. So I go and I ask for a beer and they give me her white wine. And I come back to the table and I sit it down like, Barbara, here's your wine. And she goes, I'm not drinking that. We're sitting outside at like picnic tables. I said, well, why not? She goes, it's in a plastic cup. I don't drink out of plastic cups. I don't drink wine out of, I will never drink wine out of a plastic cup. Chances are that wine wasn't that great anyways, but you know what? I looked at it and I thought, it is so unappetizing looking. And, and plastic also, the taste, you know, up to your lips with, ew, right? Ew, who needs that? So ever since that day, 
I don't drink things out of plastic cups either. I refuse. I refuse. She's absolutely right. So now the wine was probably cheap. So I went back and I had to like convince the guy. He goes, we're not going to give you a glass. You know, there's 10,000 people out here. He gave me a glass and she drank it. She was quite happy. It's about everything around the drink as well as what's in the drink. Dukes knows that. That's why I've never had a martini anywhere that tastes, feels, and it gives you the best experience in the world like you get at Dukes. Okay? So why, Jude, what's so special? Well, let me tell you. The bar manager from Italy, his name is Signore Alessandro Palazzi. Now see how I use my hand to always do that. Alessandro Palazzi. <laughs> what a gentleman. And most of the folks that are working there, they seem to be Italian too. I'm all about that. You know that. Go Italy. Okay. So he's been there since, I don't know, maybe 2007, I think I read. I don't remember. But before him was another Italian gentleman and another Italian gentleman. And these guys are known for like perfecting the martini. This is what that place is all about. So when you go in, they will sit you at a table in this lovely quaint place. And guess what? I've never gone there where I haven't met somebody at another table, talked to them, met people from England. I've met people from all over the world. It's just the kind of place where even though it's like there are business people there and it's not cheap, it's kind of upmarket, it's, it's a great place. It's a great atmosphere. We went one time, and I'll tell you that in a minute, where we actually had to wait outside. And, and three times, Senor, Senore Palazzi himself came out and said, I know you're here. I'm going to get you a table. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. All right, so you go in with your friend, by yourself, whatever, and they come over. You're the person who's going to wait on you. Says, what would you like? And he's pushing a trolley. He's pushing a trolley that's apparently 100 years old, that rosewood trolley that's been associated with that bar since, you know, 100 years ago. Classy guy. I said, well, you know, I, I'm going to get one of two things there. I'm either going to get the Bombay, Bombay Sapphire Martini with the London Dry Gin, just kind of clean, crisp, or I might get the Hendrix Martini. And the Hendrix is a Scottish gin that has more botanicals infused and, and particularly cucumber. Um, but famously, I'm going to go with the London Dry Gin, probably going to get the Bombay Sapphire, which I think is also made in Surrey where I used to live. So I'm getting a phone call. Sorry. Oh, wow. Well. Anyways, excuse me for that little interruption. Nobody ever calls me. So um, I'm going to say, let's say I'm going to have it because that's what I'm going to make today. I'll say well, I'd like a, a Bombay or Sapphire Martini, and I'd like it with a little more vermouth in it. Why? Because their vermouth is made particularly for them. So it's not this, you know, cheap stuff. I mean, you know, this is okay vermouth, but you know, it's not, it's not something I would want to drink straight, quite frankly. But their vermouth is made for them over saw, overseen, overlooked, whatever. Signore Palazzi himself is checking out that vermouth. It's made somewhere in North London for him. It's good vermouth. It's outstanding. So I want a little bit more. They take the vermouth. They take the gin. They take the glass. Everything is ice cold. So you know what? They don't shake it. They don't stir it. Everything is ice cold. Okay, so they're going to take the vermouth, which is in like a little... Um, so remember how we used the bitters before? So you, you get a couple dashes. So he's going to give me a few more dashes. But normally what they're going to do is just dash it enough to maybe coat the glass. And I hear that Senor Palazzi has never made me a martini, but that he then throws the vermouth over his shoulder and onto the floor um, just to coat the glass. Okay, so basically your drink's going to be gin. The glass is ice cold. And then they take out your gin, and it's ice cold. It's so cold, it's like thick, right? It's thick. And, um, and so they make it right there in front of you. And when they're done, you know, what do you want it garnished with? You know, I used to always say an olive. Here, I'm going to say an olive. But there, I always get it with a lemon twist. Why, do? Because their lemons, their limes, their oranges, the things they make twists from, are from the Amalfi Coast of Italy, fresh every day. And they're unwaxed. So what does that mean? Here's a lemon. Our lemons that you buy at Myers or you know, most places are waxed. So these essential oils that are on the lemon, you're not really gonna get that, you know? Then they, they take their lemon, you know, their twist and they just squeeze it and you see the spritz going into your drink. And when you take a sip of that drink, ice cold, perfectly concocted with that lemon coming in and the gin with the juniper berry, and it just, 
it, it's, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. And it is every time it's just the best drink ever. I make my own. It just doesn't, I mean, I like it. I love it. It's just not quite the same. So every time I go back to Duke's, I'm, every time I go back to London, I'm going to Duke's. Now, quickly, I'll make you the gin martini. Okay, so first thing I did, I don't often have a lot of room in my refrigerator and my freezer because I have so much ice cream in it. But I have my little bottle of Bombay Sapphire that I, is frozen. Well, you know, if there's enough alcohol in here that it doesn't freeze, right? So this is 41%, 40, 47%, 94 proof alcohol by volume. It's not going to freeze like into ice, right? And I have my glass, which I also had in the freezer. I've been walking so long that it's probably not as cold as you would like. So if you're doing it like Duke's, you're going to take your vermouth, which is not as good as their homemade. And I've got Dolan, and it's a, it's just a, you know, vermouth, um, it's just a white vermouth, so it's a dry vermouth, um, which is a fortified wine. And I'm not going to put a lot in because, you know, as I said, it's not the best vermouth in the world. Um, there are some good vermouths, but they're kind of expensive, and I only use them for martinis, so, and it's hard to find them. It's hard to find them. So I just kind of do that around my glass. They wouldn't have to. Um, and then, do I measure? All right, let's be cool. I'm going to measure. I'm going to just do two ounces, which is a pretty good shot. But realize that in in Dukes, you're getting a lot more. You're getting, now they say six shots. Well, remember I told you that shots in, in uh, England are smaller than they are in the United States. So I'm going to tell you, though, my glass is going to be full here. My glass is going to be full if Dukes is making it. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to try to do a twist. And I'm not going to get the essential oils from this lemon that I got at Myers, but just cut a thin twist and hope that when you squeeze it, you'll get some essential oils. Now, am I seeing anything spritzing in there? Yes, a little bit. So, and then I can just curl it and jump it in, jump it in. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to say this time, salute to Duke's Bar in London, the best place to have a martini. Salute to you all. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend, and we'll see you next time on Boozing with Duke. Don't forget to join my YouTube channel. Ooh, that is good. I mean, I can taste the lemon. It's not Duke's, but it is really, really good, folks. So if you're a gin drinker, try your martini out, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Have a good one.